Now for a big topic on exams, depression. Also called MDD, Major Depressive Disorder, which is also called clinical depression. Clients experience a severely depressed mood, loss of enjoyment in life, low energy, and just feel like blah. Everything is low and slow, kind of like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Everything is just super slow, low energy, and a very, very sad mood. It's thought to be caused from the low levels of happy brain chemicals, those neurotransmitters. So low serotonin, low dopamine, and low norepinephrine. Now the cause of depression is unknown, but the risk factors play a big part. So in terms of risk factors, stressful life event like a trauma, a death in a loved one, or even a recent job loss, all can add stress. Next is a chronic illness that is debilitating, for example, Parkinson's disease. And even genetics plays a big role. So a family history of depression will usually be passed on to the kids. And females have it more commonly than males. And very lastly, substance abuse plays a big role as well, like abusing alcohol or drugs. So ATI mentions a risk factor for depression, stressful life events. And Kaplan mentions, a client recently becomes unemployed and the client reports feeling depressed. The nurse understands which statement to be true. Unemployment is a significant potential stressor. Now in terms of signs and symptoms, as well as diagnosis, five or more of the following symptoms consistently for two weeks are seen in order to make an official diagnosis of MDD. Again, think of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Low and slow, energy, mood, and even slow movement. So number one is a depressed mood. Clients feel hopeless and empty. Number two is anhedonia, as mentioned by Hesse and ATI. So write this down. Loss of joy and interest in life. Number three is weight loss, typically anorexia, but we can also see weight gain. But really, it's more common for a loss of appetite and rapid weight loss. Now, number four is a big NCLEX tip here. Psychomotor retardation. So write these down. Slower speech, response time, and decreased movement. Clients will often respond slowly to yes and no questions. So again, think of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, very slow response times. Number five is insomnia or even hypersomnia, sleeping too much. And number six is fatigue, also called energia. Like a blanket of heavy fatigue, clients will not be able to move from their bed for like three days or more. And they won't eat or shower or groom because of all this fatigue. Number seven is feelings of worthlessness or even guilt. And number eight is difficulty concentrating. And lastly, a big one is suicidal thoughts that are reoccurrent for number nine. So be sure to pause your screen and really focus on the bolded ones here, since these are the most tested. Now, Hesse had two questions on this. So the client states, life just doesn't have any joy in it anymore. Things I did for pleasure aren't fun. Anhedonia, the loss of pleasure in life. And question two, which complaint regarding sleep would the nurse expect from a client diagnosed with major depression? I wake up at 4 a.m. and cannot go back to sleep. And I feel tired all the time. And ATI mentions, a nurse is assessing an adolescent who has depression. Which of the following findings should the nurse expect? Select all that apply. Irritability, energia, or fatigue really, anhedonia, that loss of pleasure, and appetite changes. Now a little side note for adolescents. So adolescents between 10 and the teen years, all the way up to 19, huge NCLEX tips. I'd be sure to write this down. They typically present with angry or aggressive outbursts, as well as vandalism and even skipping class. And weight loss or weight gain that is sudden or rapid, as well as napping during the day or excessive sleepiness during the day. And lastly, a big one here is low self-esteem, known as withdrawal, especially from activities that they once loved or were good at. 
So let's say a cheerleader captain suddenly quits everything and is now a loner at school. Hmm, huge indication of depression. So a top missed NCLEX question here. Which of the following pediatric clients should the nurse screen for depression? Select all that apply. A 10-year-old who's taking frequent naps during class time. Yes, the key term there is frequent naps. A 16-year-old who quit the chess team despite being the team captain. Yes, withdrawing from things they were once good at or used to enjoy. Now, a 14-year-old sent home from school due to angry outbursts and skipping class. Yes, remember, angry outbursts, skipping class, and even vandalism are big key signs. And a 17-year-old who suddenly lost 15 pounds in four weeks. Yes, once again, rapid weight loss. Now, for the types of depression, we see dysthymia, which is a long-term persistent depression. We see mild symptoms for about two years or more. Seasonal affect disorder happens in the winter due to the lack of vitamin D from the sun. And it's usually treated by the use of light therapy. So Hesse mentions, seasonal affect disorder, what appropriate action? Instruct the patient to be exposed to a light source for 30 to 45 minutes daily. And lastly, a big one here is pre and postpartum baby blues. This occurs either during pregnancy or four weeks after pregnancy. And it's thought to be from hormonal and even lifestyle changes. But we cover this in our full video in the maternity course. Now in terms of treatments, let's do a rapid overview, then we'll break these down one by one. So there are three phases of MDD treatment. Phase one is the acute phase. We see severe clinical signs in six to eight weeks, and suicide risk is very high. Now the goal in this phase one is to have remission of symptoms and restore the function with antidepressant medications, psychotherapy, and even ECT, which we'll cover in a moment. Now phase two is the continuation phase, increased ability to function, and the goal here is to prevent relapse. And number three is the maintenance phase, over six to 12 months. The goal is to prevent reoccurrence and we want the client to return to normal functioning. Now, in terms of nursing care, the big priority is for suicide risk. Now, the assessments, the key signs to watch for is number one, a calmer and more energetic client. This means increased risk for suicide or increased suicide risk. So watch for words like sudden, abrupt, or rapid change in energy. So write down these key words. Any sudden or abrupt rapid change in energy levels typically means a client is more suicidal, with more energy to actually do the suicide. Especially true after starting antidepressants like SSRIs. Clients have more energy to actually follow through with the suicide. So ATI mentions major depression and suicidal ideation, who is suddenly calmer and more energetic. Which of the following should the nurse consider? The client is suicidal. And Saunders, a depressed client suddenly begins smiling and reporting the crisis is over. The client says to the nurse, I'm finally cured. The key intervention is increasing the level of suicide precautions. So be sure to write those down. And another key assessment to watch for is the client starts giving away possessions that are cherished and valued. And look for statements like, I can't go on or I don't want to live. So I won't be a problem much longer, as stated by Hesse. And this will all be over soon, as stated by Kaplan. So when we hear these certain statements by the client, we must ask certain questions for suicide risk assessment. For example, have you had any thoughts of hurting yourself? Huge NCLEX tip. This one always shows up. Or do you have a plan to kill yourself? Or do you want to die? The questions should be direct and very blunt, not open-ended. So very straightforward questions. So Hesse mentions, a man tells the nurse he has no reason to continue living. What should the nurse ask him first? Do you have any plans to end your life right now? And Saunders, which behavior indicates an adolescent client may be suicidal? The client gives away a DVD 
and a cherished autograph picture of their favorite performer. Yes, giving away cherished items is a huge indicator. Now for the big NCLEX tips, if the client has a plan to harm themselves. Number one, we do continuous one-on-one -on -one observation with the client. Now this is the number one priority to ensure safety. They will be on a 72-hour hold and suicide watch. Number two is a semi-private room near the nurse's station, not a private room. This decreases isolation and allows rapid access to the client. So write this down. We always remove harmful objects from the room. For example, sharp items or even belts, ties, and glass. And inspect the client's personal belongings. Number two is we supervise the client during meals and always reassess any changes in suicidal thoughts. A goal statement that we're looking for that shows a client is not currently at risk for suicide is, write this down, clear plans of the future involving personal goals for family and friends. Big NCLEX tip. So be sure to write that down. So Kaplan mentions, a client states, I don't want to live anymore. I'll find something else to kill myself with. Which nursing intervention is important to perform next? Provide direct one-on-one -on -one observation to the client at all times. And Hesse has two questions. A client admits to a plan for suicide. What is the nurse's priority action? Provide one-on-one -on -one supervision. And a second question. One week ago, a patient attempted suicide. Which comment by the nurse is most therapeutic? I'd like to hear about how you are feeling now. Yes, always reassess. Now, in terms of interventions for depressed clients, just in general, the goal here is to feel better and less depressed. So, encourage and invite the client to participate in their own treatment plan and also in activities. So, Kaplan mentions the client diagnosed with depression, which approach by the nurse is best? Invite the client to join in group activities. And Saunders, a client with a diagnosis of depression. Plan of care that includes which intervention? A structured program of activities in which the client can participate. Next is assist with ADLs. These clients experience severe fatigue and lack of motivation. So a big NCLEX tip here is help the client get ready especially when they have not left the room for a few days. So help them get out of the room and go to the unit and even go to the dining hall or commons room. Next, we always spend time with the client. A big key term here is to sit with the client and communicate with simple and direct language. So Kaplan mentions, the client is crying alone in the room. The client has refused to eat breakfast or have morning care which intervention by the nurse is best. Offer to sit with the client and help the client get dressed. An ATI had two questions here. A newly admitted client who has severe depression, sit with the client and offer simple, direct information. And a second question, the client seems more withdrawn and depressed than usual. Say to the client, I would like to spend some time with you. And very lastly is re-evaluation. Is the client getting better for discharge? We want the client to have less symptoms and more energy and even more interest in life itself. So Hesse and ATI mention this in various ways. Hesse talks about which comment shows improvement in depression. I talk with my family about ways we can celebrate the holidays together. And ATI. Which of the following behaviors indicates a readiness for discharge? Verbalization of feeling in control of self and situations. Now, switching gears to diet. Remember, the big symptom of depression is rapid weight loss or weight gain. But typically, weight loss is most tested since it's most common. So clients lose appetite and refuse to eat. So for poor nutritional intake, write down these four key points. Number one, we provide small, frequent meals. Number two is high-calorie foods and fluids. And three, stay with the client during meals so that they finish all their meal. And number four is we always use weekly weights to track progress. 
All right, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to take your quiz and download the study guides. And also feel free to share the love, share with a classmate and even your instructor. See you guys in the next videos.